Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Final video on the IBM Value Point 486. In this video we're going to be focusing on the memory of this machine or the lack of memory and the lack of optimization of the memory. We're also going to be looking at some benchmarks to see how this PC compares with other 486 type machines. We're going to be looking at the hard drive, the original hard drive that came with the machine, and we're also going to be looking at some games. So please stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the ride. But now back to the memory situation. Now as I already stated, this computer has 4 megabytes of RAM, so there is one 4 megabyte stick of RAM in this PC. Now in theory 4 megabytes should be sufficient because most of the MS-DOS based games focus on conventional memory. So the idea is that you free up as much conventional memory as possible. Now the thing is you only have 640k of conventional memory. So what happens to the rest of the memory? Well all memory above the 1 megabyte threshold ends up in extended memory. Now this extended memory, in this case we have about 3.3 megabytes of total extended memory of which only 64 kilobytes is used so we have a fair amount of extended memory available on this 4 megabyte chip. But the thing is that as soon as we start loading commands like smart drive for example you will see that the extended memory starts building up. So here you can see that smart drive is already using one megabyte of that extended memory, leaving only 2.2 megabytes free. And games like Doom, for example, need to have at least 3.7 megabytes of total free memory. Whereas now, because we've loaded smart drive, we've only got 2.7 megabytes of available free memory. So that's not enough to run Doom. And you'll have other games that complain about the lack of extended memory. For example, SimCity 2000 is also a game which requires sufficient amount of free memory. So time for an upgrade. Now the problem with these IBM machines is that they require specific IBM memory. At least that's how I think it works, because I know that for the PS2 line of IBM computers, they use this kind of proprietary IBM SIMs, which kind of look the same as your standard 72-pin SIMs, but they were wired a little bit differently, and it wouldn't work with your uh, off-the-shelf 72-pin uh, uh, SIM modules. Oh, I do have a fair amount of 72-pin SIM modules, but none of them were IBM branded, so I was a bit reluctant to try them. But, however, I did have in my mind that I saw at one point these IBM branded SIMs somewhere around my house. But, unfortunately, they weren't here. So, after some looking, I found these two little guys in a drawer sitting somewhere. And this is exactly what I need, a 4 megabyte stick, 70 nanoseconds, with parity. So, anxious to try these out, I decided to put one in the first available free slot. So this should give me a total of 8 megabytes of RAM. So with our upgraded system now we can enjoy the boot up screen with a total memory count of 8 megabytes. Followed by a memory size error that we need to confirm in the configuration utility. So here you can see that the memory has been modified to accommodate the 8 megabytes of RAM. So yeah, every time you make a change to the system, you are forced to save these changes in this configuration utility. Here you can see stuff like the amount of memory you have, the type of hard disk, whether or not you have a mouse installed, your cache situation, flash firmware level. We also have some information here related to the disk drives, serial ports, parallel ports, startup options. We can also set passwords and we can change the date and the time here. But for now, let's just confirm our memory size change, save the changes, and reboot the system. So let's try and run Doom again. So I will again uh, enable the smart drive to fill up some uh, extended memory. But as you can see, now we have 5.8 megabytes of free total memory. So that should be sufficient for Doom to start. So for that type of stuff, I mean, upgrading your memory is definitely a plus. We can also try to run SimCity, and as you can see, it starts up just fine. 
But this extended memory is not the only thing which is important because more often than not, you will be confronted with the conventional memory limit that MS-DOS imposes, which is only 640 kilobytes. So the goal is to maximize that 64 kilobytes of conventional memory and free up as much as possible. And just to show you that the total memory isn't all that you need to look out for when playing games, I want to show you a game called Falcon 3. Now, Falcon 3 won't start with this 8 megabyte upgrade because it requires at least 600 kilobytes of free RAM. And by that, it means conventional memory. So enter MemMaker. MemMaker ships with MS-DOS and allows you to run an express setup that will optimize your uh, memory configuration. Now the express setup is really easy. You just need to specify whether you want to use EMS or not. We're going to specify no. It will restart your computer. It will then determine the optimum uh, memory configuration for your specific system. It will do another restart and then it has restarted with an optimal memory configuration. And then it will give you a summary where you can see the before and the after situation. As you can see here, we went from 530 kilobytes of free conventional memory up to 580, which is still not enough to run Falcon 6. So what do we need to do? Well, if we look into more detail and we execute the mam slash c command, we will see that the majority of our conventional memory is taken up by MS-DOS. Now, we can change our config.sys to load MS-DOS into the high memory area. So if you look at the config.sys, we can see that MemMaker definitely has changed a couple of lines here. It has added the EMM386, it has added the device high lines, and in the autoexec.bat, it has also loaded high our mouse driver and our CD-ROM driver, but that's not enough. So what we can do is we can edit this line here and specify DOS equals high comma UMB. And what will happen if you reboot, you will see that instead of 580 kilobytes of free memory, you now get 630 kilobytes of free memory and your Falcon 3 will run. And we can even free up more conventional memory by using yet another tool. Now for a while now I've been looking for an excuse to install Quem because when I first started collecting retro stuff, I had the opportunity to pick up this quarter deck Quem 8 uh, user guide and discs. Unfortunately, I don't have the box, but yeah, I have fond memories of Quem, the memory manager uh, back in the day when there was like a competition to free up as much conventional memory as possible. And Quem was definitely superior to uh, MemMaker from Microsoft. The cool thing about this book is that it explains a little bit on how the MS-DOS or the DOS memory system works with the conventional memory, the extended memory, expanded memory. So yeah, it makes up for an interesting read. But uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and install Quem on my IBM uh, value point. So the installation process is pretty simple. You launch the installer from one of the disks. This will install Quem on the PC. There's an express setup, so we'll go ahead and do that. It will copy over some files onto the hard drive. And once that has done, it will begin the optimization process. So there's also features and an express optimization process. It will reboot the computer for a couple of times. So first it will do kind of a hardware detection just to map the kind of memory maps. It will then go into the software detection phase where it will look at what kind of drivers you have loaded, what kind of devices you have in config.sys, what kind of devices you have in the autoexec.bat. And then it will analyze all of that and it will try to free up as much conventional memory as possible just by optimizing you know, where the various bits and pieces need to go into the, the various memory uh, segments. And at the end, it will come up with the summary that has uh, that indicates that the optimization process has completed. It will modify your files. And after a reboot, you will see that you do in fact have lots of conventional memory freed up, up to 634 kilobytes, I think was the maximum amount of free conventional memory that one could uh, free up in an uh, MS-DOS based system. Now, one thing I did want to cover also was this cache module here, or the fact that it's missing the cache module. Now, I know that some of the like Pentium motherboards that I have have this cache uh, module, which is you know external from the motherboard that you just plug in into a socket. But I don't have any that seem to fit this IBM uh, value point motherboard. 
I did have a couple of them laying around, but yeah, it seems like they are a different form factor. Even this one was branded IBM, but it just doesn't fit. The only thing that does appear to fit somewhat is this module, but I doubt that this is an onboard cache module. So if anybody has any idea what this is, then please let me know. It's marked Apple computer, contains a couple of ROM chips, uh, marked H0, H1, H2. So yeah, no idea what these are, but I'm kind of stuck with the cache thing here. If anybody has such a cache module for an IBM value point, you can always uh, drop me a comment or an email in the about section of the channel. I would be very interested in that. Now I did decide to do some benchmarking and for that I got my old 486DX2 66 MHz clone tower here just to do some comparisons. And it's always nice to have two machines to actually compare the results. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be using DOS Bench to do some benchmarking. Now if we look at the internals of the 486 and the video card in particular, this one also has a Visa Local Bus video cards. It's a Diamond Stealth 64 with an S3 Trio 64 chipset. It's a tad faster than the S3 card, which is in the IBM value point. But let's go ahead and do some benchmarking and look at the results. In all fairness, I also will disable the external cache on this machine. I kind of show you what the impact is of that level 2 256 kilobytes of cache. So here I've compiled some results and the clone machine is definitely faster with the 256 kilobytes of level two cache. And even with the cache disabled, it does have a little bit of an advantage over the IBM, depending on the benchmark that you run. But all in all, I mean, they match up pretty close together. So not a huge difference in performance. Now, another thing that I wanted to check was the original IBM hard drive that came with the IBM value point, this 340 megabyte hard drive that I couldn't get up and running. And the reason that I wanted to take another look at it is because I had an identical hard drive lying around. This one is also a Western Digital Caviar 2340. It has a different date code, but all in all, they look almost identical. So the idea was to kind of swap the PCBs around and see if I could get the IBM hard drive to boot. So to do that, we need to unscrew four screws to get the PCB off of the hard drive. There is this little connector thing here, which kind of makes it a little bit difficult to get the PCB out. So we need to pull on this area a bit to get the connector off and then we can get a proper view on the PCB. Now the PCB is attached to the hard drive with this little cable here. So I'm just gonna pull that off. So the connector is missing one pin so that it becomes clear how we should orient this thing. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other hard drive. So again, four screws, get the PCB off. There's a lot less foam on this one. I guess this is to kind of reduce the uh, the noise levels, the acoustic levels as the disc is spinning. But yeah, as you can see, the PCBs are virtually identical. There are a couple of chips which look a little bit different. So this main chip here appears to be of a different form factor. But other than that, it's it's virtually identical. So I'm just hoping that I will be able to get at least one hard drive running here. And that way we will be able to see what is on this IBM hard drive. So as I still had my 486 running here, I was able to detect the hard drive now. So this is already better than what we had before. And I was also able to boot from the hard drive. Now there wasn't a whole lot of interesting stuff on this hard drive mostly just uh, DOS, Windows, and it had a couple of games on there like X-Wing, it had Raptor, Doom, and also Wolfenstein 3D. But yeah, the disc seems to be running fine, so yeah, I might put that back into the IBM value point. Unfortunately, I did have an issue with the monitor. All of a sudden, it just gave up on me and started producing this whining noise and no image anymore, so that was a bit of a bummer. But I will do an attempt to fix it, 
Luckily, I did record some footage of the monitor and some MS-DOS gameplay, and I'm going to leave the video at that. Next 10 minutes will be some MS-DOS gameplay. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, liking the video, providing a comment, and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.
Black Cat has assigned you to an outpost in the Swamps of Sorrow. Your task is simple enough that even the War Chief feels that you are capable of it. Construct at least six... Players activated. 